Ito ang Broad Streamcast Communicators Ang naiba at kakaibang plataforma sa digital broadcast Mula Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao hanggang sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo Broad Streamcast Communicators Ang sandiga ng sambayanan Mula sa walang labis at walang kulang na pagbabalita Paglilingkod, maglalahad ng mga mapagbuong komentaryo at usaping pambayan para sa kapakanan ng karamihan. Broad Streamcast Communicators, tuwirang maglilingkod ngayon hanggang sa susunod na henerasyon. Buhay online, sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Ating tunghayan, pakinggan at tuklasin ang mga pangyayari at kaganapan sa mundo ng online. Buhay online, sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Alamin ang pinakalates trends mula sa trabaho at kung hanggang saan na ang narating ng teknolohiyang ito. At ngayon, narito na ang ating host, ang ating Teki Mami, Si J. C. Bautista. Hello, hello, sorry, I'm late. Five minutes late. I'm so sorry, because uh, in eyes ko lang po kasi because the past few days the internet has been really trippy and alam naman natin po lahat kasi busy siya kada dahil din sa nagmayaring bagyo, may mga nasirang mga cell sites and all that. But of course. Of course, there's no excuse for being late because I'm online, but uh, I actually was working before this. Pero happy, happy Monday sa lahat. Uh, welcome to the show po sa mga nanonood. And um, I trust that you had a good and restful weekend or kamusta po yung inyong mga celebrations ng Christmas. Uh, Siyempre, we, this is a, I think this is the second, this is the second Christmas in this pandemic. At, uh, pero, Itong Christmas na to actually, mas lenient kesa sa last year na Christmas. No? Mas malungkot yung last year na, na ano pa talaga yung virus. Pero ngayon na ang mga tao ay bakunado na. At saka the first time, di ba, na pwede nang lumabas yung mga matatanda natin and our kids. That's why yung mga malls, puno na naman, right? And, and it's as if, okay, as, as if it's normal. Parang normal na. Except that, of course, we're still wearing masks. So, okay. And, nothing we can do about that right but anyway uh hope you ha- everyone had a merry christmas and however you when you celebrated it ako po, of course syempre, i miss my siblings from manila and uh, australia and america but i was very happy naman din po to have spent christmas with um with the laka family with my my partner jenny and his family uh, maraming maraming salamat i'd like to give thanks to sila tita pri maniago the family sila jj at mitch na nag-welcome po sa amin sa barrio. We had a very festive um, uh, celebration po sa, sa Bacolor, Pampanga, uh, you know, where we had a potluck. At the same time, we, we were in open air sa farm doon. Uh, it was very, very relaxing po. At the same time, yung parang for a day or so, hindi mo naisip yung stresses of this pandemic. Of course, uh, you know, social distancing pa rin, of course, pero... Uh, in a way, parang na-feel namin na parang walang gantong situation because we were with family and we enjoyed the food and the music and the merrymaking tsaka siyempre gift-giving, no? Uh, but uh, all is well po and uh, siyempre po every day we are thankful na nagigising tayo sa bagong umaga that we are all well and fine, okay? But anyway, Merry Christmas to all and uh, siyempre happy holidays dahil no New Year na, okay? Natapos na naman po yung isang year in this pandemic. And of course, in February, it's going to be two years na since we're in this situation. And of course, uh, talking about uh, the the virus situation at saka yung Omicron virus na yan, na alam na po natin ngayon based on the findings and the tests 
that yes, this Omicron virus is spreading fast. Pero like they said, it's not as potent or it's not as ano as the Delta variant yung effects no yung ill effects sa tao. Uh, mas madaling mahawa yes, pero lalo na lang na kung nabakunahan na kayo, mas uh, mas malaki yung chances niyo to to fight this virus and to to get well uh, mas mabilis no. Pero it doesn't mean to say na hindi na tayo kailangan mag-observe uh, ng uh, health and safety protocols of uh, wearing a mask when we're outside, especially when we're in a, in a public place, especially where we, when we are in, in closed and indoor settings like the mall or I don't know kung kasi sa ibang countries bukas na yung mga sinihan like sa Japan, pero tayo hindi naman pa. Pero even like when we go to the restaurants, we still have to be careful. Alam ko mahirap naman talagang alam nga namang maghugas ka na maghugas ng kamay tuwing susubo ka. Pero yun lang talaga, bago ka kumain, of course, you have, you have to to clean your hands and all that. But still, still the same, same safety uh, and health protocols still uh, prevail, no? Dapat. Speaking of uh, variants and viruses, I have a bit of news. Okay. This is sa so Manila, so Manila Times ito. Fresh from, from an article by Crispin Aranda ng Manila Times. Uh, two days before Christmas this year, the U.S. Transportation and Safety and Security Administration reported uh, 2,081,297 passengers on holiday flights, just 144,062 less than the year before. The original COVID-19 ravaged the travel and hospitality industries, okay? It was just over a month since the newest variant of COVID-19 was first reported to the World Health Organization from South Africa on November 24, okay? And it was only 21 days when the first case of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus in the United States was reported in San Francisco. The city government assured the public that the city was prepared to handle the virus. Pero noong December 21, NBC News reported that the Omicron variant has overtaken Delta as the dominant coronavirus variant in the United States. Yun nga talaga, di ba? Yan ang sinabi nila, ang, nagda, ang nagkakalat ngayon, pa, ngayon sa Amerika is yung Delta. This is after na naging complacent mga tao na porke bakunado na nagsibiyahe-biyahe na yung mga taga Amerika at the same time, um, yun, uh, biyahe, hindi, iba, hindi na nagmamask, right? So, uh, with more than 73% of new cases caused by Omicron, okay? So, ito nga, pero yung Delta ang mas dominant na coronavirus na makalat sa Amerika ngayon. With more than 73% of new cases caused by Omicron. According to the data released by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention a day earlier, unlike domestic travelers, those traveling those traveling overseas, uh, destinations need visas to visit, study, work, or become permanent residents. I don't know. Is he eating something there? Is it, is, 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 he can, no. Okay, very good. Okay. Unlike domestic travelers, mga tra- those traveling overseas destinations need visas to visit, study, work, or become permanent residents. Okay? It turns out the virus was more effective than all the anti-immigrant laws presidential proclamations and immigration rules combined except for Canada, okay? The U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, okay, reported only 7.7 million applications, petitions, and requests for benefits in the 2020 fiscal year. The lowest number of receipts in the past five years the USCIS received about 5% fewer applications for visa for lawful permanent residency than 2019, down from 548,900 to 519,700. So, yung mga pag-apply ng visa sa Amerika nabawasan. Na, na Despite the lower numbers of LPR applications received, the, US, the USCIS completed about 23% fewer LPR applications in 2020 the lowest total completions in the last five years due to the virus triggering closures of and intermittent openings of USCIS that limited in-person services. In contrast, despite receiving fewer petitions for relatives, the USCIS completed more 
uh, I I30s there than in any of the previous years. Okay, so. Uh, noong 2016, ang petitions na tanggap ay 869,300. Ang mga nakumpleto ay 751,700. Ano natin sa 2019, mababa pa rin, naging 748,700, pero ang nakumpleto 759,000. Pero nung last year, yung mga petitions na nareceive sa Amerika to get a visa is, was 712,000. Ang nakumpleto, Ang laki, 840,800, okay? The petitions pile up starts and continues at the National Visa Center where approved petitions are forwarded and processed with interview notices issued to documenter, documentarily qualified applicants if the consular posts are operating under normal conditions. But COVID-19 and the variants that emerge are far from normal. In fact, with the virus as the rationale, okay, for banning admission, of uh, LPR sent to the U.S. by ex-president Donald Trump in 2019, the immigrant visa backlog ballooned to 494,289 in April 2020, two months after President Joe Biden revoked the Trump proclamation. So, di ba? Tinanggal ni, ano yung mga ginawa ni Trump. With 18,979 Four applicants scheduled for interview, the documentarily qualified DQs still was 475,310. So Christmas this uh, this year, the DQs at uh, the National Visa Center was 475,000, just 20,000 less than the starting numbers in April. Okay? So Australia naman, okay? So Australia naman. Ito sa America yun, yung visa. Ito naman ang tungkol sa Australia, all right? We just told you the, the visa situation going to the States. Now I'm going to talk about Australia, okay? where my brother lives. All right? In its 2020 to 2021 program this year, Australia's overall migration program lodgements dropped by 9.3% from 170,170 in 2019 okay, uh, to 157,989,000. Okay? Okay, so a drop, no? Siempre, we expected. The Department of Home Affairs conceded, okay, conceded that uh, COVID-19 had major in, had a major influence on the delivery of the migration. Siempre naman, right? What's happening to my phone? Uh, as, as the virus disrupted supporting services such as English language testing, biometrics, and health and character checking, all right? So, yan, yan, okay? Decrease overall for 2020-2021, okay? Skill stream applications decreased by 9% with 79,620 places, accounting for 50.7% of the total. Family stream applications were 9.4%, with 77,372 accounted for 49.3%. Like the U.S., okay, the spouse partner category compromised the bulk of applications. Ayan na nga, yung pagpipetition ng mga asawa. 93.5% of total family stream outcome. Of the 10, okay, of the 10 largest source countries of migrants in 2021, the Philippines was fourth. The rest of the ranking as follows. Number one, my migrants to Australia were, was China with 22,207. Okay. Uh, India, 21,791. Number three was UK with 12,703. 12, uh, Philippines was 11,058. All right. And Vietnam, 8,120. U.S. 5,048, Nepal 4,714, Hong Kong 4,313, 4, number 9 was Pakistan with 4,021, and Thailand last at 4,002, okay? So, um, tungkol naman sa mga may, pagkukuha ng visa ng mga foreign students na nag-aaral abroad, kamastahin natin to sa itong pandemic na ito, right? Uh, in the last two years, okay, about 30,000 former international students of Australia either hold or have held a temporary, uh, temporarily or are stuck overseas, no? Hello there, Miss Angelica Paz. Good morning. Happy Monday, Miss Angelica. 
Thank you, thank you for uh, for always standing by, always supporting. Maraming maraming salamat. Merry Christmas to you, Miss Angelica. Okay, happy holidays sa lahat. Okay, thank you for those who are watching and uh, sasama pa, pa lang sa atin sa programa. Thank you, thank you very much. So, uh, Immigration Minister Alex Hawk recently announced, dito sa Australia to ha, tungkol sa mga gusto mag-aral doon, temporary graduate visa holders who lost time in Australia due to travel restrictions will now have the opportunity to apply for another subclass 485 visa. Sa, sa Australia to ha, yung mga na-stuck doon or hindi nakatapos ng kanilang pag-aaral dahil sa pandemya, they won't actually be able to do so until J July 1, 2022. At the time of writing, the processing time range for new subclass 485 visas was 9 to 11 months. Oh my God, ang tagal. Strict po sila sa Australia, eh, di ba? Halos nagkaka-lockdown lang nila ulit. Uh, all right. And uh, at four, uh, four, 485 applicants, Safna Burma spent more than $80,000 so she could complete her Bachelor of Information Technology degree at Victoria's Deakin University. Oh my God, mahal mahal mag Australia. Echoing the sentiment of other 485 applicants stuck overseas, SBS News quoted Ms. Verna's lament. We've already waited 21 months. We've wasted 21 months of our lives and we're being asked to wait for another eight to nine months just to apply for the visa. And then it might take another few months for processing. For a new 486 applicants, the processing time on DHA website is 10 months for 75% of applications. For 90% of applications, the wait is one year. Oh my God. Okay, so yan ang situation, US, Australia. Punta naman tayo sa Canada. True to its pronouncement, Canada admitted over 400,000 new permanent residents in 2021 for just the second time since its founding as a country in 1867. The first time was in 1913. Diba? Talagang ano open ang Canada talaga sa migration? And diba? Lagi nila yung pinopromote. You know, and of course, I have a lot of friends and, and also family in Canada. And they, they attest to the fact that it's a really nice and safe place to live. Why not coconut, right? Truth, uh, okay. Immigration, refugees, citizenship Canada has been able to meet its immigration target through a technicality. An immigrant is considered to have landed or admitted as a permanent resident or PR either by having arrived as an, as an immigrant from overseas or having changed their legal status in Canada or in Pakasal Kadon or whatever. No 2020, IRCC, uh, the, the Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada, or IRRC, a report shows that before the pandemic, nung bago po nung nag-pandemic, about 30% of new economic class immigrants were already inside Canada when they got permanent residency. So, na, nandun na sila nakatira. Okay? While about 70% moved from abroad, in 2021 naman, the numbers were reversed. Okay? 70% became PRs from within Canada. Nandun na sila and about 30% arrive from overseas, which is uh, highly uh, explainable because nga, nag-lockdown sa, sa mga ibang countries. So, hindi sila makabiyahe. Okay? So, yan ang, ang, ang case sa Canada. Now, we go to New Zealand next. Okay? Punta naman tayo sa New Zealand. All right? Teka, hindi ko makita yung oras. Okay? Punta tayo sa New Zealand. In 2018... 2018-2019, okay, Immigration New Zealand or INZ approved 20,584 residency applications. The year before COVID-19, the number went down 17,524, moving up again in 20 to 2021 to 25,924. Over a 10-year period, the total number of PR's applications received by INZ was 283,055, okay? By comparison, the average na yearly PR admission sa, into the U.S. from 2001 was 1 million, okay, before the pandemic. However, in fiscal year 2021, October 1, 2020 to September 30, 2021, the number was reduced by 72%. To date, 
yung US Embassy has not resumed visa operations. Hindi pa sila tumatanggap ng applications for visa to America. Unless anti-vaxxers egged on by the Republican Party booster vaccination rate instead of booing the immediate past president in Texas last December 21 when he claimed that he had a booster shot. Earlier in April, after falsely claiming for years that the vaccine was dangerous and he would rather take Clorox, instead, ex-president Trump called for business and said that the that he was the father, <coughs> he was the father, the he fathered the vaccine. Parang si Raulo naman kasi itong, <coughs> excuse me, dating presidente ng Amerika, eh, no? Siya ang nagsabi kasi na dangerous yung vaccine, ano ba yan? Ba't hindi nga niya ininom yung Clorox na sinasabi niya, si Raulo siya. But anyway, so that is my take on visa, acquisitions of visa in those three countries, okay? <clears throat> in connection to that, okay? <clears throat> all right. In connection to that naman, all right, 6,300 flights were scrapped, okay, as Omicron hit Christmas weekend travel, di ba? Talaga naman. Ang ano ba yung scenario sa atin po nga? Okay, let me show you the scene sa airport. Di ba? Ano nangyari na yan? Uh, sad naman, pero kasi nga, nangyari to Biglang nagkaroon ng Omicron, eh nakapag, ano na, <clears throat> nakapag-book na ng flight sa mga tao, tsaka ang Amerika kasi was open for travel. This is what happened during the holiday season, okay? Let's tell you uh let's tell you about what happened during the holiday season. Sa America, <clears throat> tong nangyari. Uh, ano na rin to? Parang same as um All right. Hold on. Let me just get it, please. Let me get it. <clears throat> anyway, have yourselves a merry little Christmas. Let your hearts be light. Simply now. From now on. I should have gotten it here. What is it? Oh, trouble. Yeah, okay, there you go. I forget it. Bear with me, bear with me, so sorry. Okay, there. All right, so that's the scene. There you go. <clears throat> Hi there, Miss Marilu Coraza. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. I'm glad that we you could join us. To umaga na to. Maraming salamat, Miss Marilu. So anyway, I was just talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, yung tungkol sa pag Papag-mention ko lang yung pang pagkuhan ng visa. America, Australia, tsaka New Zealand. And now, going on to the virus alert. Pinag-usapan natin yung virus. So, sa America, sa New York, 6,300 flights were scrapped because of Omicron this weekend and the tung Christmas season. So, New York, more than 6,000 flights have been canceled worldwide over the long Christmas weekend and thousands more are delayed. A tracking website reported Saturday, half I mean Saturday, as the highly infectious Omicron variant brings holiday hurt to millions. Okay, compounding the travel chaos in America, severe weather in the country's west is due to wreak havoc on roadways and other routes there. Although it may well bring a white Christmas weekend to Northwest cities, Seattle and Portland. So Philippines, naman kalungkot lungkot na nagkaroon ng bagyo bago magpasko at marami na salanta at nasirang mga bahay at buhay. That is the sad reality naman sa atin. Ito naman sa Amerika, yan mga flights. According to flightaware.com, nearly 2,800 flights were scrubbed around the globe on Saturday, including more than 970 originating from or headed to U.S. airports with over 8,000 delays. Okay? Noong Friday, there are around 2,400 cancellations and 11,000 delays. So, mantalang kahapon, cancellations were already surpassed 1,100. Pilots, flight attendants, and other employees have been calling sick sa so America, yung mga flight attendant nila, or, or nagpapa-quarantine after exposure to COVID. 
forcing itong mga airlines na to, Lufthansa, Delta, United Airlines, JetBlue, Alaska Airlines. So, yung, kung yung mga kamag-anak niyong returning, ay uma, sumasakay sa mga airplane na ito na delay, na mabuti, okay? From America, alright? Hi there, Cynthia! Happy holiday, Cynthia! Nice to see you! Salamat, salamat sa inyong patuloy na pagtangkilik. Maraming salamat. Thank you, thank you. As I was talking about flights, no? So, itong mga airlines na Lufthansa, Delta, United Airlines, JetBlue, Alaska Airlines, nagkaroon ng delay sa mga flight na yan. So, kung inaantay niyo yung mga kamag-anak niyo, okay? Tumutok lang kayo online, tsaka tumawag, right? Help at United Flight canceled again. Itong sabi ng isang uh, passenger. I want to get home for Christmas. Sinabi ng isang traveler from the U.S. state of Vermont, nag-tweet siya ng Saturday. Flight aware data showed United canceled around 200 flights on Friday and nearly 250 nung Sabado, about 10% that were scheduled. Tapos nagkagulo nga, nag-reroute ng mga flights, uh, rerouting flights and uh, flights and uh, and planes, may mga pilots siya kayo mga planes and nag-reassign din ng mga empleyado kasi nagkasakit nga yung mga ibang empleyado. So that's why uh, kulang din yung mga crew ng may airplano, right? But Omicron surge has appended business. The nationwide spike in Omicron cases this week has had a direct impact. Uh, has had a direct impact sa flight crews at saka yung mga taong nagraran ng operations sa even the ground stewardesses, the ground crew because nagkakasakit nga. As a result, they fortunately had to cancel some flights and are notifying impacted customers in advance so that they can rebook their flights. Okay. Similarly, ito yung Delta. Delta Airlines, uh, I used to fly that all the time, no? They scrapped 310 flights on Saturday and was already canceling several dozen more on Sunday. Kahapon, saying it has exhausted all options and resources. So, kung nagtataka kayo kung bakit hindi dumating yung mga kamag-anak nyo, nagkaroon ng delay sa airport, alright? Or sa flight before. China Airlines accounted for the highest number of cancellations sa ito, China Airlines. Kung sasakay yung mga kamag-anak nyo sa China Airlines, inaantay nyo kahapon, Kaya hindi nakasakay. With China Eastern scrapping more than 1,000 flights, over 20% of its flight plan on Friday and Saturday, and Air China also grounding about 20% of its scheduled departures over the period. Okay? So, yan ang, ang condition, alright? Tungkol sa travel. Travel will be treacherous to, to at times impossible. Dahil nga dito sa pag, pagkalat ng mabilis naman ngayon ng Omicron, alright? Okay, we have been, we started to say to talk about news abroad, right? And so, uh, mapunta naman tayo sa Pilipinas, right? Let's see, okay? Uh, in the Philippines, uh, it recorded 201 new COVID-19 cases on Christmas Day, which is just a which is really considerably a low number compared to the uh, the five-digit numbers that we used to have, no? And the Philippine log, logs for 133 new infections also. Uh, so Manila, uh, same case count as Christmas Day yun, okay? Tapos ano pa, pag-uusapan natin is yung, to, we are talking about the virus, no? Uh COVID reproduction number in NCR almost doubled to point zero point seventy before Christmas. Okay, before Christmas, though. Okay, the COVID nineteen reproduction number sa NCR increased to point zero seventy before Christmas. Ito ang sinabi ng independent group Octa Research na report nila kahapon. Octa Research fellow Guido David said that yung figure na ito, <coughs> excuse me was recorded on December 22, in which the reproduction number, which refers to the number of people that each COVID-19 patient can infect, almost doubled from the 0 0.42 recorded the week prior, which is December 15, okay? Kung ikokompara natin to with last year, the reproduction number also spiked before the holidays, di ba? Nung last, the ikalawang Christmas na natin to ng COVID eh. Okay, so nag-spike uh, nung before the holidays, followed by a dip during the holidays, probably due to many people 
going to the provinces for the holiday. And then an uptick by the first week of January of this year. The holiday uptick may explain the increasing reproduction number and positivity rate. Moreover, David said that the reproduction number sa NCR based on testing has also increased to 0.79, which he said is a more accurate measure of the reproduction number since it is not affected by the backlogs. Okay, Whatever the case may be, we must continue to be vigilant and practice minimum public health standards as we enjoy the rest of the holidays. Okay. People with cold symptoms should be mindful of mingling with other people. And of course, kasi flu season rin. Tsaka malamig ang panahon ngayon. Talaga, sa umaga minsan, yung electric fan lang nakakanginig na yung lamig eh. Hindi na kailangan mag-aircon. But it's flu season too. So that's, that's why you see a lot of people sneezing or coughing or, or you know, wooze, wo wheezing. Uh, on Christmas Day, the Department of Health, the OH, recorded 432. 33 new COVID-19 cases in the country with a positivity rate at 1.6%. Since the pandemic broke out, there have been more than 2.8 million COVID-19 cases in the country, of which 9,376 are currently active. Okay. So, all right. So now let's go back to, uh, you know, more news in the Philippines. We finished about that, okay? Technology, okay? What do we have about technology here in the Philippines? Okay? Uh, this is the time to join a network that understands why you use mobile, okay? Communication has been changed forever by our cell phones. Diba? Gone are the days when it was considered a luxury. But of course, luxury pa rin kung bibilin mo iPhone or thing, whatever, iPhone or na napakakamahal or even pati nga yung mga Android nagmahal na rin eh you know mas mura pang bumili ng laptop kaysa bumili ka ng cellphone di ba more than a thousand dollars for these new iPhones okay that's actually my gosh fifty thousand or so it is now a necessity for students di ba teachers parents frontliners employees and everyone else nalagang lahat meron cellphone kahit na ngayon nagkikinda ng fishbowl or, or you make Tulak-tulak dito, naka-cellphone eh, right? Uh, for teachers, for students, okay? And everyone else, cellular phones are today's most imperative communication tool. True naman talaga. Hindi ka nakamakapaniwala kung meron kang kakilalang walang cellphone. Kami meron, itong aming si Tita Dax namin. <laughs> walang cellphone. The importance of mobile phones into our daily lives and lifestyle has never been more pronounced than now especially in this pandemic, okay? Underscoring the fact that it is more just a mere communication tool or device, but it is home to apps, okay, uh, that help in aspects of business, education, health and wellness, entertainment, e-commerce, and pati gaming na nga. People have shifted to mobile phones to learn, to shop, to eat, watch movies, to listen to music, and conduct business among other daily activities. The increasing progress of mobile technology, the accessibility to high-speed internet connectivity, and the remarkable communicative interface and apps in these devices results into a whole level of new and inno innovative, innovative rather, experience. Okay, so dapat talaga yung mobile network na sa mo adapts to the itong klasing lifestyle na gusto natin. Okay. Uh, May bagong player ang, ang telecommunications dito sa Pilipinas, itong DITO, Telecommunity Corporation, or simply DITO Telecommunity, which was launched ng early this year, ng March. This is already making significant achievements in providing reliable network connections for Filipinos, itong DITO. Okay? In October 2021, Mobile Network Experience Report for the Philippines conducted by Open Signal, an independent global standard firm that analyzes consumer mobile experience, Dito Telecommunity ranked first on 4G availability, outperforming its counterpart networks only seven months after it was introduced to the market. So seven years old pa lang to, ah, seven. Seven months old pa lang tong Dito Telecommunity Corporation. Bagong player pa ito ka, kasing ano, in, in, in equal footing with Smart and Globe, okay? Wala nang Digitele, eh, pero ito bago dito. Okay? 
So it ranked first on 4G availability, outperforming its counterpart networks only seven months after it was introduced. This definitive guide, which analyzes consumer experience on wireless networks, used data collected from July 1 to September 28. The report further stated that Filipino users on Dito telecommunities spent the most amount of time connected to 4G, an impressive 97.5%, and therefore, the new operator is the winner of the 4G Availability Award. Okay? Dito telecommunity has put an end to Smart's three report long streak as an outright winner and also stopped Smart from achieving a second clean sweep of our award table. Aba? Talagang pinangalanan ng gusto, no? There has been an unprecedented surge in the use of social media and the digital space. Thus, Filipinos need a steady mobile network that understands how mobile phones have evolved from a means to keep in touch with loved ones to a daily life enabler. Okay? So, anong importante, no? Embrace your lifestyle, okay? Tanggapin nyo ang inyong pamamuhay ang ngayon sa pandemic na ito. There are three prominent Filipino users of mobile phones, okay? Ito ang kanilang profile. Ano, ano ito? There are three, okay? The gamer, ayan, ano? the gamer who is always immersed in his favorite mobile game. Number two is the work from home or WFH employee who also needs a reliable connectivity for the countless virtual meetings and the sales representative who is always on call for clients who need presentations and updates. Okay, so uh, yeah, ito, I I describe natin tung bawat profile na ito ng mga mobile phone users. Okay, ang gamer profile is young, analytical. Spontaneous, aggressive, and expressive. Okay, alam natin to. Ito yung mga gamers. And spends 8 to 10 hours in his mobile game of choice. And of course, alam natin ngayon na itong mga games of today ay hindi lang basta naglalaro ka o i-turn on mo yung, i-on mo yung app or yung game. Lalaro ka. Lahat ito meron ng chat component. May social media relevance na itong games na to eh. Because they meet people. I mean, I, I speak from experience because my own son, I think, grew up around gamers and, and cosplayers and people that he met online, right, who have become his friends till now. Siguro, uh, yun. So the gamer profile is young, right? Uh, totoo yun, analytical sila. Like, you know, I see all these things talaga in my son. So they uh, they build, they are engrossed, engrossed in interaction with a community of like-minded young adults Okay, who loves duels, destruction, thrills, powerful characters, and equipment to be able to experiment and stay ahead like any mobile gamer, di ba? So, tsaka kailangan up-to-date ang gadgets. Siya, ano ko, yung mga pinagkakagastos na yung ganyan to spiff up his computer. He actually built re built his own bagong computer. No, He has a laptop at yan. Then, nagbuo siya ng sarili niyang computer. Okay, nag-ipon siya para i-build niya yung sarili niya ng ng powerful gaming computer, actually. So, he enjoys using 4G network with his latest games. The urban young professional naman. Ito, yung isa pang profile. The urban young professional, on the other hand, is still adjusting to this new work-from-home shift. She needs to be in front of a computer at a certain time in the morning to check and read her emails, report for work, take on new tasks for the day, okay, attend a virtual meeting, okay, uh, furnish management with her accomplished task and submit daily deadlines before logging out and calling it a day. Okay, finally, if you are the go-getter sales representative, ayan, ito yung pangatlong uh, profiles, salesperson. Kung ikaw ay isang go-getter sales representative na kailangan na, ng cellphone mo para makipag-usap sa mga kliyente, update them of a new condo or car model promos or set appointments for a go-see. Yan kakailanganin mo rin ang cell phone, of course. Whether you are one of these three or a simple parent who need to communicate with your family, a student who has to attend a virtual class, an event manager who needs to coordinate with a team, an online seller who needs to market your business, or a customer who uses cashless transaction or mobile banking or 
or you know, order ng grab food or food panda, among many others who are reliant of, of the online space, a dependable and strong connectivity like dito telecommunity, yan ang kakailangan ninyo. Um, I wonder kung ang, ang dito telecommunity na sa ano na Pampanga. Hi there, Miss Bless. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays, Miss Bless. I hope you had a good Christmas uh, celebration po itong nakaraan na weekend. No? Okay? In connection to this, Open Signals report further noted during their initial look at the mobile experience of Dito Telecommunity sa Pilipinas, there was an initial advantage immediately post-launch as their download and upload speeds in Central Metro Cebu and Davao City fell slightly to the point where they were similar to the overall scores of all operators. Dito telecommunity, uh, telecommunity users, ang hirap naman sabihin na itong pangalan na itong telco na to, Dito telecommunity users download speed experience is either around or below the average across all the operators. So Dito telecommunity scores range from 9.4 Mbps to 20.4 Mbps. Pwede, pwede na yun. <clears throat> Sa akin, kailangan over 100 Mbps eh. Compared with other giant networks, Dito Telecommunity has the advantage of launching with the newer 4G technology really now, okay? Even when this newest major telco is yet to launch its 5G services, Dito Telecommunity has revealed its plan to launch a home broadband service using 5G soon. Wow! Sana, totoo, kasi mas mabilis. It all, magkano naman kaya itong Dito Telecommunity eh? It also plans to cement its stance along with counterparts in terms of area coverage as it relentlessly expands to more areas in the country. Dito Telecommunity is currently available in almost 500 cities na po siya available, achieving its projected covered areas for the last quarter of 2021. As it is, it currently covers more than 50% of the population based on the second government technical audit conducted in July. All right? Okay, so yan po ang tungkol sa latest naman dito, ng technology dito sa Pilipinas at ang provider na ito. Okay, all right. So, more news around the globe, okay, are from Philippine Star po. Okay, sa Philippines, paano yung pagbibiyahe, right? Anong nangyari? Marami rin na-cancel na flights, di ba, sa Philippines? Okay. Of course, yung sa climate, okay, and weather, of course, yung nangyari with that. Weather disasters cost $20 billion more than last year. Okay. Ito naman ang balita tungkol sa, from our NGO. Weather disasters cost $20 billion more than last year. Okay. Uh, the 10 most expensive weather disasters this year cost more than 170 billion or 150 billion euro, euros in damage, 20 billion more than in 2020. Itong sinabi ng British Aid Group on Monday, today. Each year, UK charity Christian Aid calculates the cost of weather incidents like flooding, fires, and heat according to insurance claims and reports. In 2020, it found the world's 10 costliest weather disaster disasters cost $150 billion in damage, making this year's total an increase of 13%. Christian Aid said that the upward trend reflects the effects of man-made climate change, and it added that the 10, disaster, the 10 disasters in question also killed at least 1,075 people and displaced 1.3. Okay, sabi, uh, alamin natin kung ano itong mga disaster na magastos, okay? The most expensive disaster, okay, in 2021 was Hurricane Ida, which last lashed through the eastern United States and cost around $65 billion in damages. After crashing into Louisiana at the end of August, it made its way northward, causing extensive flooding in New York City and the surrounding area. Tinan mo, naglakbay pa talaga tong disaster na ito. Spectacular and deadly flooding in Germany and Belgium in July was next on the list at 43 billion in losses. Okay? A cold snap and winter storm in Texas took out the vast state's power grid cost 23 billion. So ang sumunod sa, uh, ano, sa flood na yun ay 
flooding pa rin sa Germany and Belgium. Tapos nga itong winter storm in Texas that took out the vast state's power and cost 23 million, followed by flooding in China's Keelan province in July that cost estimated at 76.6 billion, 17, billion dollars. Other disasters costing several billion dollars include flooding in Canada, a late spring freeze in Fran France that damaged vineyards, and a cyclone in India and Bangladesh in May. Okay. So, ayun yun, okay? In mid-December, the world's biggest reinsurer, Swiss Re, estimated natural catastrophes and extreme weather events cost around $250 billion in damage this year. It said the total represented a 24% increase over last year and that the cost to the insurance industry alone was the fourth highest since 1970. Okay. So, mga alana tayo magagawa right? Hmm? All right. So, for those who have questions, please, and, and, and suggestions, and uh, on what topics you want to talk about, what topics you want to hear about or ask about, please feel free to send your questions uh, to, my, in my, to, my message, to me in Messenger, okay? Uh, and also, or through my email at jcbautista, uh, or, or techimami at gmail.com. That's my email address where you can contact me too. Techimami is T-E-C-H-I-E -E, and then mommy like mommy. Techimami at gmail.com. You may send your questions there, okay? And if I can answer, I'll answer or answer it here in the show. Tsaka yung mga suggestions niya po ano pang gusto niyo pag-usapan dito are very welcome, all right? So maraming maraming salamat sa ating mga friends who consistently and continuously support us, like si Ms. Angelica Paz, si Cynthia Buste, right? And si, now si Tita Bless, thank you very much for joining. Tsaka siyempre, andyan sila Jake Elizar and uh, yung mga ka-colleagues ko sa ESL industry. They, they have promised to keep taking a peek at the show from time to time. Thank you very much. Okay, so going back to what we are talking about news around the globe. Let's talk about this new ano first. Hold on a second. All right, tapos na to pala. Okay. Hold on. Oops, I almost removed myself. There you go. Okay. So now let's talk about which social media networks have the highest usage, okay, among Gen Z and millennials? All right, let's talk about this news. Which social networks have the highest usage among Gen Z and millennials? Alamin natin, okay? Uh huh. Mm. Ah. Hold on a second. Oops. What happened? Hold on a second. Uh huh. <clears throat> what happened there? Hmm. I lost my you know, my ground. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Please forgive me. But anyway, uh, let's just uh, talk about something else. I'll just deal with this tomorrow. Okay, oops. If you know the answer, text me. <laughs> okay, this is a breakthrough. Okay, we're talking about breakthroughs and and new technology and new places to go to. All right. Look it up. Japan Prof creates Teletaste TV screen. What is that? Look at it. Teletaste. Ano ba yan? Binidilaan yung ano? Yung uh, parang iPad, right? Okay. Let's see how, how this works. Okay. All right. 
In Japan, a Japanese professor has developed a prototype lickable TV screen that can imitate food flavors. My goodness, right? Ano ba yan? Another step toward creating a multi-sensory viewing experience. The device called Taste the, okay? Taste the TV pala. The device is called Taste the TV, of course. It's uh, self-explanatory. Uh, IPTV uses a carousel of 10 flavor canisters that spray in combination to create the taste of a particular food. The flavor sample then rolls on hygienic film over a flat TV screen for the viewer to try. Okay? Tingnan yung picture na to, right? Ayan mismo, okay? Yummy in HD. This is how you get the full benefits of Taste the TV, a prototype lickable TV screen that can imitate food flavors. A demo was held at the Tokyo University on December 22. But my God, in this pandemic, that's really gross. That is the best way to get the virus, right? Mang didila dila kayo dyan, lilipat mo yung TV o didilaan mo yung channel. Ano ba yun? It's a little bit uh, weird, right? Not a little bit, it is. <laughs> but of course, it's ingenious kung nalalagyan mo ng flavor yung TV, but excuse me, but dangerous in, in this time, right? Exactly, my gosh. It is, okay? It is pretty dangerous if you ask me, all right? Okay, so, all right? Uh -huh. So, um, that's what happened, right? Uh, so, so, Japan, yan, latest technology, kuyan, and, um, Meron na siguro prototype pa lang yan, okay? All right. So on this note, no, we 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 will end this um, broadcast for today. Uh, we we talked about the virus. We talked about travel. We talked about how to get visas or how we can get visas nowadays in those three countries: Australia, New Zealand, and America. Na dito po sa Pilipinas hindi pa sila na next stop po po, po po sila ng operations na pag-grant ng visas. Pero, at saka mahirap pa rin kumuha ng passport, ng Philippine passport. It takes a lot of time dahil para makakuha lang ng uh, appointment. Alright? Tapos, personal appearance po ngayon, wala nang hindi pwede mga proxy-proxy na yan. Personal appearance, appearance required, of course, to make sure ikaw yun and you have to bring the proper documentation and of course your bakuna shots so so yung mga hindi pa nagpapabakuna bawal yan ng travel okay kasi hingan kayo ng id and if you don't have it don't even try okay anymore because yun ang ang major requirement doon okay but anyway all right opo malapit na tayong maglunch but um, tomorrow we will continue to to talk about breakthroughs in technology and in the philippines and around the world Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo for joining us. And of course, uh, ang trending ngayon po ay yung mga tulong na dumadagsa uh, of, of countries donating to the Philippines for the mga nasanlanta ng bagyo na talaga naman po nakakaawa. Okay? Uh, na nag-Christmas sila ng ganun ng condition. My own Yaya Saning alone, who, who lives in Samar, in Leyte, they were devastated. Wala pa sila at ilaw hanggang ngayon. So, you know, I miss Ariaya very much. Ariaya, 42 years, but she just texts. Of course, they're using cell phone and data to text us to say that they got uh, nasalanta sila ng bagyo, nag-iba yung bahay nila na wala ng bubong, tsaka wala pang ilang. So, please, patuloy kayong tumulong. Those who want to help, please, right? Uh, thank you so much. And uh, th at the end of the day, of course, you always have to remember that three things should remain in our lives, all right? And that is, of course, Faith, hope, and love. Because I don't think we can live without faith, hope, or love, right? Mm -hmm. For everyone, because that's most important. That we always feel love, hope, and faith, and love for everyone else. So, on this note, I'd like to uh, end this broadcast. At uh, balik po tayo bukas, all right? Same time, same uh, station, same platform, all right? Buhay online with yours truly, Jay Bautista. Uh, I, this, I think this is the last, my last uh, broadcast on a Monday of this year, 2021. Thank you very much for joining me. Maraming maraming salamat po. Makita-kita po tayo ulit bukas. All right? Thank you so much and enjoy your lunch, please. Ano nangyari ba tayo tumugtog yung aking music? 
What happened? My music is not playing. All right. Inyong natunghayan at napakinggan ang mga makabagong pamamaraan sa mundo ng online sa pamamagitan pa rin ng Broad Streamcast Communicators. Hanggang sa muli, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Happy holidays.